This channel doesn't have enough of a budget to have special effects, so we have to make them ourselves, but don't worry about that. What up, my Nathans? Today, we're doing a review of JID's new album, DiCaprio 2. As I said, DiCaprio 2, the new JID project, came out 2018, and we're gonna tackle this video a little differently than usual. First, I'm gonna level my camera so it doesn't look like stupid. Okay, back to normal. Um, yeah, so new JID. We're gonna handle this differently. I want to handle this video as if it's just kind of like a first reaction, not a formal review because we are so close to December, which is what I perceive as the end zone of the year, which I think everyone agrees with, but that's kind of the end zone for music. We really won't have enough time to have a really full fleshed out opinion on a lot of albums pretty much after like the first week of December. So for now, let's just do like an open discussion, whatever the hell it's called. I don't care, we'll make a quick little video about it, because I'm sure a lot of you are dying to hear about it. I put a poll on my Instagram, follow it if I don't really care, but I put a poll up. Results, like 75% fire emoji, which is like, you know, pretty, pretty solid, gets like a, a B plus. First song, frequency change is like the introduction, whatever, some guy woke up, lighting a lighter, gonna get high, watch some TV, maybe watch some movies. Some Leonardo DiCaprio movies. Ah, does it all make sense now? Um, whatever. Next song, Slick Talk. Good fucking, I, ex, that, that, what a, mm, out of words, sorry. Pardon my autism, but this is one of the strongest songs on the album. What an excellent way to kick this thing off. We have J.I.D. with his just filthy, autonomous flow doing whatever he wants on this track, and it is working perfectly. I mean, the beat swap, I didn't really like the beat at first, but it really does pick up and really adds to an, a new layer to the song. We have Westbrook, which I, something about ASAP Ferg's voice. It just doesn't sound right to me, it doesn't really rub me the right way, and it kind of ruins the rest of the song for me. I don't think it's necessarily a bad song, lyrics, everything is pretty solid. It's just this ASAP Ferg, verse or chorus just mm, mm. off D's and 151 rum were singles released before excellent fucking heat J. Cole snaps we are not gonna mess with this homeless guy anymore like and they did that skit about how J. Cole looks like he needs to borrow a fucking charger that was pretty funny we have 151 rum excellent song you know we got that drilling flow classic J.I.D. whatever you say you know J.I.D. isn't really lacking in this album Next songs we have, I don't know why I put my phone away because that's where all the songs are. Somehow J.I.D. found a title of a song that makes white people sound even whiter when talking about rap music, which is pretty impressive on its own. Off to Zoinkies. I, the only downside to this song, and I know a lot of people really enjoy it because of the message and the theme about drugs and you know, get it off it, do better, you know, you're better than this, you don't have to revolve around drugs, blah, 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 blah. I'm not saying it's not a big issue, I'm just saying it's not the first time I've heard of it. But I was more disappointed with the fact that this song felt like it was building up to some drop and it never went there. It just kept going slowly. Just the way the vocals and the pitch and the beat were all together, it just sounds like you're getting higher and higher and higher and I'm just waiting for this beat to just go dirty and then he doesn't. Not a huge deal. I can see the appeal of the song. I just wish that it dropped eventually. Like I wish there was some hard moment. Kind of like in DNA when you have that huge build up for that one dirty fucking verse by Kendrick. Something like that. That's what I was expecting and I didn't get it. So it kind of, a little bit of disappointment. I'm sure I'll get over it in the next few listens. This is just first impressions. Working Out was the color show. If you didn't see it, you are stupid because this song was fucking insanely good. Oh, the piano is chilling and just the way it just plays out with him rapping and the intro just being so funky and different, little styles he throws in there just to make it different from the color show. What an excellent track. Easily the pinnacle of the album. Not exactly the hardest flow he's ever done. You know, I think Slick Talk is insanely good with that drilling. I'm like, oh, there are so many words to describe how well he flows. But I will say that Working Out is just a smooth, really laid back track that he just kills perfectly. I mean, this is a J.I.D. I really do enjoy, and I'm glad this song made it onto the project. I'd prefer not to talk about Tide. Um, Strawberries and Hotbox are two songs that I kind of blend as one. I know that sounds kind of weird, but on my first few listens, they have this very, you know, old, 
retro West Coast kind of vibe to them. They have this nice balance to the songs. A BJ the Chicago Kid feature, and I haven't heard this man's beautiful voice in so long. It is so refreshing to have him back. We have Method Man and Joey Badass on Hotbox, and a little upset Joey didn't get to go off as much as I wanted him to. I thought this beat was like perfect for him, but he kind of just did like ad libs and chorus and then a little bit of the verse. Method Man, you know, reminds me of uh, that old, old West Coast. Bounce. They're solid tracks. They're not, they don't stick out, but they blend together really nicely, which is nice on the album. Kind of goes together well. Then we have Mounted Up, which from the trailer, if you have not seen the DiCaprio 2 trailer, I highly recommend it. it is, it's only a minute and like 20 seconds, but it's, it's fun. It's, it's, it's really entertaining. Um, the one song, the Mounted Up beat that he put in that song, I wasn't feeling it. I was like, this isn't going to be a good, I don't know if J.I.D. can really rap on that. But hearing the song, full production coming out, oh, this thing slaps. It's just raw energy. I don't know what else to say to you. I just, I really enjoy it. It's not, it's not exactly a cult favorite, but uh, I really do think it's a special track and I can't wait to listen to it more. Um, we'll see in December if I enjoy this more, if it makes the top 10 list. Just know, Mounted Up is a sleeper track. You're hearing it first from Big Poppy over here, the, 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 the best music guy on the planet. Just the other day, it sounds so heavily J. Cole inspired that it kind of throws me off. Not in a bad way, but also not in a good way. Kind of like, why would you be taking from J. Cole's style? You know, you're under the label Dreamville. You guys should all be a little bit distinct, but a little bit similar. But ripping J. Cole's like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just straight in the chorus. Just the other day, I was goddamn broke. Like that, just very J. Cole inspired. Kind of shitty when you kind of take that much from your other artists, your co-artists. Um, I know J. Cole's one of the biggest members of Dreamville, if not, well, he is the biggest member, but it's still kind of weird to see this in a J.I.D. album. I mean, he does, it's not a bad song, it's just the chorus kind of makes it seem a little bland, kind of boring, because it's just like, he's doing what J. Cole does, but not as good as J. Cole does it, so. <sighs> Next two songs, Despacito 2, who would have thought it's coming out? Uh, yeah, um... <sighs> Um, interesting name choice. Yeah, interesting name choice. Like basically the perfect mediocre track, you know? Not, it doesn't, you know, it's not J.I.D. doing something different or new or bringing something new to the table for once. It's just J.I.D. on a track. Not much else to say about Despacito 2, besides I kind of am curious about the name choice. And then we have Hasta Luego, which is like a drilling, quick, you know, speeds right through the album, you know, good finisher, fucking hits hard. And then we go full circle back to the beginning of the album. And I just want to say, you know, a few keynotes in my head, if there's anything to retain from this, is that this is J.I.D. If this is your first time listening to The Kid, uh, well, I, first of all, this is a great album to start with. Um, also recommend The Never Story. You know, if there's one thing about J.I.D. is that he's been compared to Kendrick Lamar when he was younger, Good Kid Matt City, Section 80 era. Um, also, he's taking a lot of inspiration from J. Cole, as I said before. Dreamville's really, you know, fleshing him out. I learned the other day that Quality Control, the label that has the Migos in it, almost recruited him, but J. Cole kind of sniped him before. And I am extremely thankful for J. Cole for doing that. He is the base god because I do not want a J.I.D. Migos track. J.I.D.'s got some special talent to him. The way he just flows, his his jagged Jared, and I hate to use the same words. It just, like, just the first few lines of Hotbox are just so fucking, like, such a good example of how he can just change his flow completely, you know? Hop, skip, jump, 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 you know? Like, he's got this robotic kind of, like, jagged flow that just works so well, adds so much character and flavor to these tracks. And Scrawberry's like kind of near the beginning. He's got this like level of poutiness. Like, yeah. Like, he's like kind of like a kid. You can hear he's like, he's got his big lip up like pouting. I don't know. Adds a really nice level of flavor to these tracks. Really makes this interesting. And that's why I really can't say this album is mediocre. In fact, I think it's a little bit better. Not every song lands. Obviously, I didn't want to talk about Tide, but you can listen to it for yourself if you love it. Congratulations, if you hate it, well, you're, you've got a lot of people who agree with you. Other than that, I mean, this album is not underwhelming, not overwhelming. 
It's like a good median, a little bit on the good side. I don't know what else to say other than that, but I highly recommend you listen to it. I really want GID to be a bigger artist. I think he has everything in his toolkit and he just has to apply it a little bit better, including marketing a bit more. So definitely, definitely look forward to seeing JID on a lot more bigger tracks. I can't wait to see him on other labels, getting features on other artists that I think he would work really well with. I can't wait to see him on the big screen and stuff like that because he's going to make it big. That is my early game prediction for next year. This guy's gonna blow up. Other than that, quick channel update. I have a big video, not a big long video, but a very awesome video I've been working on for a while. Sorry it's been taking so long. I haven't been putting any videos out because I've been just focused on that and school. I'm sure you can understand. Um, it's good to see you guys again. I hope it's good to see me again. Uh, I wanna keep making music videos and don't worry because December is gonna be saturated with stuff. I've got so many videos planned. You will not believe. It's, it's the music month. December's our music month. December we start recapping. So, uh, you know, get ready for a lot of uh, different videos. I'm really excited. We also have a 21 Savage project coming out very soon and that's pretty much the last of the big albums. Maybe a Gucci Mane project as well. Sprinkle that in there. We'll see. East Atlanta Santa 2 maybe? I don't know. Put it in the comments. I've been looking at my face on the, uh, the screen the entire time. Sorry, I'm into make eye contact with you guys. Other than that, that's the video. Thank you very much.